Round number one, and Dre, I offer you this. Among all the analysis of what could happen in this fight that gives Kell Brook hope is that Bud Crawford at times has been a slow starter. In fact, Dre, the fight we did against Egas Kavioskis, Egas outlanded Crawford total punches over the course of the first three rounds. What should be Brooks' approach early on? Well, he can't get reckless, but he, he needs to start fast, start picking up that jab. I think Brook is realizing right now that Terrence Crawford is a lot longer than he realized in the space between, you know, where he is now and actually hitting Crawford is a lot further than he realized. But yes, coming off 11-month layoff, being, you know, a slow starter historically, the first few rounds, Brook wants to win those. But it looks like Brook is playing Crawford's game now. He's watching. He's studying. And I don't think he can outthink Crawford. He's got to start to let that, those, those hands go as he comes behind that left hand. See, Brook thing is timing. That's his thing. He wants to time Crawford on the way in. You know, Brook also has a great jab, a sharp jab, a strong jab. And you can see Terrence Crawford trying to figure out how he can land his jab without getting hit. Another thing, another thing, Crawford typically comes out in the southpaw stance, but he came out in the right-handed stance, probably to confuse Kell Brook. He has power in either hand, Crawford. He has finished guys, whether it is orthodox or southpaw, but in recent years, we have seen plenty of Crawford, mostly in the southpaw stance, and wildly effective in doing so. Here he comes out as a righty. And there is that jab from Kell Brook as he goes to the body against the champ. Brook jabbing extremely well right now, not just to the head, but as you just saw, also to the body. There he throws the right hand behind it. Brook has a brilliant one-two. It's automatic. It's his favorite combination, but his jab right now is landing. He just scored with it accurately upstairs against Crawford. And that's what it's about. It's about breaking the timing and the rhythm of Terrence Crawford. And you have to do that with your jab. Set it up. The power hand, which is the right hand for Brooke. Crawford looking to close that gap as he Goes southpaw for a moment, doubles up the right-hand jab, and then comes with a left. Good exchange here as he switches back to righty. Fascinating first round. Going to take a short break. Back ringside here for round number two of our welterweight championship fight. Tim Bradley in that first round, Kell Brook threw 17 jabs, effectively landed six of them. Look, timing is what Kell Brook is special at. You know, he has a 69-inch reach. You have to understand that. He has the shorter arms in this matchup, but he knows when to throw his jab and at the right time, at the right distance, and at the right speed. It's funny to say that he doesn't have the reach. I mean, just look at the size advantage. Look at the size across the shoulders, across the back. Look at the muscles popping in the upper body of Kell Brook and the base he has as well, that foundation with the legs. And see, what I noticed is, is that Kell Brook is taking the page out of Angus Kalayaskis. He's being patient. He's waiting. He's looking to counter Crawford. He's trying to get Crawford to commit so he can make him pay. Jab is giving Crawford a lot of problems right now. You see him thinking, and Brook is doing the right thing. He's jabbing. That's the most important thing he can do right now because it sort of keeps him out of danger. It helps him to kind of create his range and where he wants to let his shots go, and it's also got Crawford thinking. The fight's going to get interesting if Crawford is able to make adjustments. I've seen Brook have a great plan A. He's got a great, great boxing ability, but when fights get deep and there's time to make adjustments, like in the Spence fight, I don't see him make that adjustment. We've seen Crawford do it in the past. He's going to have to do it right now because plan A, Brook has the advantage. Spence fight happened in May of 2017. That was the last time Brook fought at this 147-pound limit. He was fighting brilliantly, and then Spence got to him with the power and scored an 11th-round TKO with a broken left orbital bone suffered. 
You also want to see how Brooke takes the shots of Crawford as he starts to land clean, flush shots. Right now, it's a battle of patience. Neither fighter can afford to make a mistake. And as you see, Brooks stepped in just a tad bit, and Terrence had combinations waiting on him. Just fired off a right uppercut, did Kell Brook. Brook has every punch in his arsenal. He has a strong left hook. He also has a straight right hand and a beautiful uppercut. And as you can see, his jab is giving Terrence Crawford problems, and Terrence goes southpaw. Crawford switches for one of two reasons. Either he sees something or what he was doing in the right-handed stance wasn't working. What do you suspect here, Dre? I think the latter is, is true. The right-handed stance wasn't working, and he wants to see if he can get something going from the left-handed stop, stop, stance. Stop, stop, stop. No, no. And a two in Vegas. Joe, Tim, and Dre with you here in Vegas. Round number three of the championship fight. According to CompuBox, Bud Crawford opponents land just 21% of their total punches. That is number one in the world among welterweights. So far tonight, Kelbrook is landing 36% of his punches against Terrence Crawford. So don't think that... Kell Brook is worried about Terrence Crawford going southpaw. He's not worried about that at all because he's used to that. He comes from the Ingles gym. They're, he's used to seeing switch hitters in his gym, guys that switch from orthodox to southpaw. It's nothing to him. You mentioned the Ingle gym. That is the veteran British trainer Dominic Ingle, who has trained Kell Brook since the start of his career. But Ingle opted out of this world title fight due to COVID concerns because Kell Brook trains in the Canary Islands for training camp. Engel did not want to travel and then have to quarantine nor come to the United States. So instead, Carlos Formento is the trainer in the corner of Kell Brook. First time they've ever worked together. I'll tell you one thing that the Southpaw stance has done. It's taken the jab away from Kell Brook. You see he's not landing his jab consistently anymore. Well, when Crawford turns southpaw, he's not even throwing. That's what happens. That's what turning southpaw does. But it does allow you to land a right hand like Brooke just landed on Crawford right now. A right hand well, hands free, hands free. can be the best weapon stop, stop, against a southpaw. And, of course, when he is in that lefty stance, you will see that right hand of Bud Crawford, as it is right now, hanging right over the front of Kell Brook. Listen, Crawford has the reach advantage, but he's going to have to close the distance on Kell Brook. He told us in the build-up to this fight that Brook can't fight mid-range and in close. Right now, Brook is winning the battle from the outside. Crawford's got to slowly start to close their space. There's that right lead again from Kell Brook. Minutes ago here in round three. Pretty good start for the challenger, the former IBF welterweight champion. The guy who says he's rejuvenated three fights since he lost the welterweight championship to Errol Spence. That's how Errol Spence had success against Brook. He closed the distance and started to bully Kell Brook. He started to fight him in close. Brook fought back valiantly, but he really didn't have any answers for that. See Crawford having his moments there. I see some swelling already. Some swelling already on the right eye of Terrence Crawford in the right hand, right down the middle, and it just lands for Kell Brook. And there's a right hand from Crawford. Way to answer that right hand. Ha! End of three. Bernard's in the sport. Shakur Stevenson saying he expects his good friend Terrence Bud Crawford to pick up the pace here. CompuBox has Kell Brook 24 of 99 punches, Crawford 25 of 93. Shakur Stevenson will fight December 12th in this ring against Toka Khan Cleary. Shakur, the recent featherweight champion, now contending at 130 pounds, looking for a showdown for a belt here. Round number four. Crawford has to continue to get his lead foot outside the lead foot of Brook to have success with his offense. That will put him in a safe position to let his combinations go. Beautiful right hand. And the chance gets to him. Get over here. Just hey. like that. Get over here. Terrence Bud Crawford Five. hits the Six. gas. Seven. Eight. 
Come to me. Come to me. You all right? Yeah. Give you a chance. One of the best closers in the game. 27 knockouts in his career. Do we have 28 right here? This fight is also Thundering fair. in. Look that's at that's Crawford. That's it, that's it. Vicious attack to close it. No, 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 no. And he stares him uh, down. Okay. okay. No, no. Hey. With his family here, his wife Isha, Miss Deborah, his mom, he does it again. Slow start that boils up and a thunderous finish here in Vegas. Nine devastating power punches in that fourth round. And as good of a start as Kelbrook had, Crawford demolishes him. So like a jab. Like a right hook, right on the money, right on the button. And you see the legs right there of Brooke as he wobbled back to that corner. Nice finish up right here combination from Terrence Bud Crawford. You know, sometimes your opponent can do the work for you. As you can see, Kel Brooke was moving forward. He shot a jab out there. Crawford timed it over the top with a nice, short, I would say jab, hook. Jab, that's hook type. That's the first knockdown. Remember, the ropes held him up. Boom. And you know, that shot wasn't even on the chin. That shot was right on the eye. And it had that type of effect on Kell Brook. That shows you what type of devastating punching power Terrence Bud Crawford possesses. And then how he finishes. And Dre, he gets that look in his eyes. At this point, the fight was as good as done because Terrence Crawford is one of the best finishers in the game. You can't be hurt like that against Crawford, especially knowing that he had a slow start. He wants to come in here and prove a point and remind everybody why he's atop that list, and that's how you do it. Once again, to your point, Tim, it's not a three- or four-round fight. It's a 12-round fight or less. And I wanted to see the reaction from Kell Brook once Terrence Crawford landed a clean shot and we got our answer and Terrence finished the fight like he typically does when he gets a fighter hurt. In brutal fashion, Tony Weeks got in there just in time because things were about to get ugly. And Dre, did you see the face?